Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Premier League uh, review. Did you think I'm gonna wear a Manchester United jersey that soon in the season? Neither thing did I. Neither did I. Uh, kind of funny the way it goes. Yeah, I thought it's a really good time to talk about the Premier League for two reasons. A, we had now two rounds and I usually try to do now the Premier League every uh, two rounds. Uh, but most importantly, also the transfer window has closed. Well, you will not get a full breakdown on all the transfer dealings from my part because it's not really my forte and we're not really that into uh, that overall. I think it's rather remarkable, especially on the Premier League side, because as I said in the title of the video, it has been a record-breaking uh, week on the field and off the field. And off the field is, of course, the Premier League broke, absolutely broke the transfer market with signings that I think are overvalued in many ways. However, it, there's also a desperation in there because you already see that Manchester City looks pretty darn invincible at this point. Yes, they have dropped already points. Yes, uh, we shouldn't forget that. But uh, with this Holland guy up front who scores two hat-tricks and already on nine goals after five uh, weeks, <laughs> that's pretty impressive stuff. So um, maybe we sh we'll start in the transfer market uh, quickly. Uh, my thoughts, I mean, uh, the, the outstanding statistic there is, of course, that uh, Premier League teams have outspent combined La Liga, uh, Serie A, the Bundesliga and Liga, uh, and probably can add on a few more leagues before we go there. They have spent more than anyone else. Uh, testament to the big financial might that is the Premier League this moment. However, I think uh, it's also a little bit a relief package, I think, for the rest of all of Europe because the prices that have been charged for certain players, I just ca really cannot believe uh, that uh, Premier League teams are willing to pay that. For me, uh, Manchester United is uh, probably one of the biggest spenders out there together with Chelsea, but it all seems so non-planned in a way and that actually will compound their troubles um, going forward I think because uh, you don't you get your transfers done early like City did in a way like Liverpool did as, as well but some of their transfers did backfire I thought already Darwin Nunez yes you needed to get him in he was a young striker uh, was already a little bit overpriced uh, paying 70 million for Casemiro I think Casemiro is a great signing for Manchester United uh, 70 million for a 30 year old is a little bit high, I would say. I think also 70 million were paid for Isaac by Newcastle. Then 100 for Anthony. Are you freaking kidding me? Yes, very flashy winger and so on. But clearly Ajax didn't want to let him go until, you know, there's always a price. There's always a price where people will go uh, and say, yeah, we're going to buy that. Uh, then I think uh, yesterday was Aubameyang and Zakaria to uh, Chelsea. Also, there are uh, transfers where I'm not quite sure that this is uh, will really bolster the squad. But, you know, we got to see. Maybe it will all work out well. Uh, I actually think that many transfers will not work out for Chelsea because they have a track record of spending a lot of money for players that are not that great. But, you know, that's uh, just my thoughts. Uh, as I said, I think Isaac uh, proved already in his first start that he uh, could be a really, really good signing. But on the other side, I he didn't jump out at me as a big one. Uh, and, uh, you know, and this is now my personal view. Milan played 35 for Charles de Ketelare, which I think is an outstanding talent. Yes, probably uh, someone in the Premier League would have paid more for him, uh, but he wanted to play Champions League. Uh, but I think he, that is, it seems like a steal, because I really rate him very, very highly from what I've seen in the Champions League playing for Club Rouge from him. So yeah, that's the record-breaking stuff off the field. On the field, I already said Holland, 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 Holland. Um, we also had a record-breaking win by Liverpool, uh, who, yeah, just about saved their season. But uh, just on Erling Holland, I really find the statistic I, I had to chuckle. I think in his first five Austria Bundesliga games, he scored five goals. In his first Champions League goals uh, games, he scored eight goals. In his first uh, five Bundesliga goal uh, games, he scored eight goals. In his first five Premier League games, he scored nine goals. Uh, the Austrian Bundesliga is really, really, really good. 
is really, really, really good because the other defensive are not so slotted by him. Um, of course, I know there's a development factor in there, but I really find it remarkable how in the Premier League he scores now the most goals. Yes, he's, he is a more mature striker and so on. But given that everyone was actually expecting him to struggle big time, you know, hold your horses. Yes, the Premier League is the best league in the world at the moment, but it's not so that a great talent will have to struggle first and go through. Um, and also, yes, in the Bundes Austrian Bundesliga, he was, I think, a 19-year-old back then, or even younger. Um, but it was also probably the one really competitive season uh, in the last few uh, with Lask actually chasing Salzburg for a while. So yeah, uh, just those thoughts. Other than that, I think I they keep being up there and I want to wear them for, for a while, but they never pop up, pop up, up. I have to mention Arsenal. Not only did I, uh, am, am I watching a little bit of All or Nothing, I'm getting a little bit tired of it. If I was a player, Ateta was my coach. With all the stick that he comes up to motivate people, I would be demotivated, I think, after week three or something like that. That's it. But that... I really like him overall, I think, as a person. But his motivational speeches, it's a oh, come on, come on, <laughs> in, in, in a way. But uh, it is good to see Arsenal being so good on top and that this team at this very moment, with, and they have not played any really, really tough opponents. So uh, as, as we'll see, there will be stuff come, come, come up. But at this very moment, Arsenal seems like a little bit changed team because they're winning games that they didn't win last season or the two seasons before. Also, uh, since I'm wearing United, I think United, um, they were not as flashy as they have been uh, against Liverpool. However, the last two wins were more uh, showed resilience, and especially yesterday against Leicester, I actually thought it for herself. What they showed, show, 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 this is kind of a working team right now. They found the right formula uh, to move forward and maybe then make some adjustments along, along the way, especially since Casemiro was not playing. Let's see what Anthony will do. Um, this was the one thing that I was, um, you know, I don't want to say hope, hoping for, but I was way, way waiting for, for United that you got this big win against Liverpool and now you can of need to um, get some wins and they got some dirty, dirty wins and three wins on the spin is actually a pretty good uh, thing. Also thought uh, Fulham is to me um, a team that probably will stay up and I'm very happy about that. Uh, and then we have of course the, uh, we touched a little bit uh, a little bit the train wreck at Chelsea who were a very unhappy German coach. There's another very unhappy German coach, but I think he's a little bit hap, happy now in club, but he's also moaning all along. Let's jump in uh, to get the results from the weekend out of, out of as I said. United got a very workmanlike uh, uh, win against um, uh, Southampton, who turned out to be at this moment a much better team than everyone would expect. Bruno Fernandes getting the goal in the 55th, and then they actually, yes, there were chances for Southampton, but they get the job done. Um, Bradford Everton 1 1 was a little bit surprising results. Brighton completely dominated at least. It did. This was for me the hipsters game uh, of two teams that are performing well. Um, yeah, it was all Brighton and they only got a 1 0. Chelsea, actually, that was maybe not so bad, but it, actually, but it was down to the last at the moment. It's really, really not looking good. Um, go down to 10 men because Conor Gallagher is getting two yellow cards. And then with 10 men, despite Leicester being maybe the more proactive team, or, or, or there were two Sterling goals, settled the game for Chelsea with a man disadvantage. And then Harvey Barnes only pulls from back immediately, but I never find for frankly equal. That must have been a really gutting loss for Leicester. And I said, Leicester, I'm really worried about this. I, I think they might just stay in the league. They, are, they look a little bit like Leeds last season in a way, which is, is, is a shame. Liverpool, again... Didn't win up until till the point, and then Bournemouth comes and boom, nine goals. Nine goals. Yes, the opposition was not the greatest, but uh, scoring nine is really, really bad. And then uh, I think Scott Parker got the sack, but he it was more like because he said, yeah, they are more like that is going to come. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't be so honest, but like, I, th I, I think he definitely won it out, but that's pretty amazing. Um, Manchester City had only lost ever two games on a Saturday, three o'clock kickoff. And they were all against, uh, you know, under Guardiola. Uh, and they were all against uh, Crystal Palace. And at half the Crystal Palace had a 2 0 lead. And at that point, I said, okay, I, the Bundesliga is not so great. Let's switch over. Maybe I'll see. And what I saw 
was a city performance that, yes, the goal by Bernardo Sil uh, Silva was a little bit lucky, but that actually started an avalanche. And the way in Hall Holland scored his hat trick, I especially have to say the 3-2, uh, it was such a wonderful play all over from a corner, 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 one touch football at its very finest. And then the way he scored uh, his hat trick goal, um, you know, just bu bullying forward. That's a dimension that City did not have so far. So they can kill you now in so many ways. Uh, it was impressive stuff come, come, coming back because at that moment you thought, yes, history's going to repeat itself. And they said, no, we're going to step down. And I think City will be hard to be denied. Could they be denied by Arsenal who showed some grit? I mean, Mitrovic giving Fulham uh, a 1-0 lead. And then they still fight back Odegaard and then later on Gabriel getting the winner. Uh, this was a rather, rather interesting, uh, tense, tight game that Arsenal found a way to win it. And that, I think, bodes well for Arsenal going forward. West Ham get a first win against Aston Villa. Aston Villa, another team where I'm a um, little bit worried about. Uh, Wolves, Newcastle 1-1, one, one, not so impressive, I gotta say. Uh, and Spurs get a, you know, workman-like, not flashy win against uh, Forest. With Harry Kane even missing a penalty, although he gets the first goal, uh, he scores a brace. And then, uh, the, but everyone is talking about Richarlison juggling the ball and then being completely destroyed. Yes, Richarlison probably should show, show, do it, but I think uh, whoever mowed him down should be sent off. I'm sorry, you cannot do that. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the midweek round. I mean, the first one that jumps out, I mean, Fulham beating Brighton. That's a huge result because Brighton was flying high. I really think that Fulham uh, is the real deal this season and they will probably go for a mid-table finish and I'm actually quite happy about because I, you know, my first Premier League game was Wales, the Kram coaches. I really want to see them. For me, Raheem Sterling probably is a good signing by Chelsea because he scored another one, but then they lose to Southampton even before they have to turn it around through Lavia and Armstrong. And then uh, there was nothing coming. I mean, I saw the second half of the, of the game and I gotta say, I gotta say that it was closer than Southampton score uh, three. And to me, yes, it's early again, and I don't know if they can sustain it. But it, uh, me, Southampton is one of the positive surprises of, of, of the season so far because uh, they played some good opposition, but they are actually now mid table and probably uh, looking rather, rather fine. I have to say that, of course, um, Tuchel was not happy. I don't like how he is saying that, you know, there's no competition squad. I think it's just a ruse to get more signings. So I hope he's happy now with Obama Young and Zakaria. Um, of course, I, I also get a little bit the American perspective that Pulisic is just a bit part player. is a real shame. I think he would be a player that should have been moved out of there. But, you know, who knows what, uh, uh, how this is going to turn, turn, turn out. Arsenal get another one. I mean, Arsenal completely romped over Aston Villa. Just missing chance. I mean, Gabriel Jesus, also one of the good signings of, of the season, scoring the 1-0. It should have been way more. Douglas Lewis uh, then with a 1-1 in the 74th, but then Martinelli immediately comes back to give Arsenal a win. But this should have been a 2-1. This should have been a 4-1-5-1. One. That's how good Arsenal were in that, in, in, in that one. And I'm actually really looking forward to see if Arsenal is the real deal and whether they can do this uh, moving forward as well. We have another hat trick by Haaland. I mean, Bournemouth come back with a nil against Wolves. Not sure how much this tells us about Wolves, but uh, City just relentless against Forest. Uh, Haaland scoring a hat trick again uh, in all kinds of ways, even with his head. Uh, and then in the, in the second half, Julian Alvarez gets a brace as well. So, I mean, not only do they have Haaland, they have Alvarez. I think this is this is scary. This is absolutely scary on the City side. Uh, the only thing that I want is why am I not excited? Why am I not watching City? I guess because they do, they have so much possession and the games are often foregone conclusion. I think City against the Gould opponent is something worth watching. But those beatdowns, I'm not so happy. I mean, I wasn't even happy with the 9-0 by Liverpool. Um, before we go to Liverpool, West Ham, this was similar to Arsenal against Aston As As Villa. What's wrong with Spurs? I gotta ask. Because, I mean, yes, they took a lead through an own goal. But West Ham, Antonio should have scored before and uh, they only got an equal su through Suchek. I think West Ham, maybe even too late, realized that they really can get something off Spurs. Uh, that was a rather, rather uh, odd performance by them. 
I gotta say, uh, no, it's not an odd performance. It was a good performance. I mean, they showed that they can, but uh, he sh they should have won this one. It's the odd performance is by Spurs, uh, where I don't know what's happening because uh, every everyone expected to be them good. But on the other side, they grind out results, so maybe that's a good one. Um, a little bit off is still Liverpool to me. Uh, yes, there are tons of possession, but it seemed so empty. And when Isaac took the um, the go ahead goal. It didn't necessarily come as a total surprise. And again, Liverpool find themselves down a goal. Uh, only against Bournemouth this didn't happen. Um, Isaac would have scored a second one. And that, will, that was, would have been a really brilliant goal. He was just marginally offside. And again, Klopp going uh, wacko on the ref. I'm sorry. Uh, this was too tight of a call, I gotta say. Firmino then gets the equalizer, and yes, they are missing uh, many important players like um, Jota, um, Darwin Nunez, of course, so that you have the front line kind of already taken down, and also probably a little bit Thiago, so in midfield there's uh, a little bit. But they don't look sound to me, because even when they get the 1-1, I was expecting an onslaught by Liverpool, but no, uh, staying defensively tight basically took care of uh, all of them. There were not really chances until there was one in the 98th minute. I mean, Cavallo, I mean, a corner kick that was so poorly defended in, in, in a way, I I didn't get why are they not clearing the ball in a way, and then Cavallo uh, uh, slots it in, and Salah gets two assists, when I really thought that Salah was one of the worst players on the field. Personal opinion, of course. And then yesterday, uh, United it was not pretty, although I thought in the first half they looked actually, actually quite, quite, quite good. I mean, the way the goal came from a goal kick that just returned to them via Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, and then Sancho, Shows me that there's some the young ones are showing, and then they ground out there the result because Leicester was just too poor to get a result out of there. So, with all that, as I used to say, we look at the standings and we see Arsenal way up top and uh, City having only dropped points to Newcastle so far. And Spurs is also in third place despite not, not, not being all that good. But you know, maybe they will find uh, their mojo at one point. It's still very much City's league to lose at this point. Liverpool hanging in there, but I just have a hard time seeing. I, I, I actually see Liverpool taking a step back. It will be probably like two years ago. Uh, it seems to me at least this way. Um, uh, Manchester United is ahead of Liverpool uh, at this moment. And I'm really looking forward how this will develop for United. Whether we see a good United or bad United. Um, but I, on the bottom, there are three teams that I did not necessarily expect. And there with Wolves, Aston Villa and Leicester. Um, I really hope they will get they, that those teams will find a way. Um, yeah, I think we didn't talk about the Steven Gerrard seems to be on a hot seat. Uh, if we look at the differences um, between projected and expected points, we see that Arsenal is still outperforming um, their own expectations. Uh, brightness in the Fulham, as I said, is also a very positive one. Uh, for negative ones, Liverpool is definitely behind the eight ball already. Chelsea is, of course, bad. West Ham also a little bit uh, behind expectation, but especially the bottom four teams, Everton, Wolves, Aston Villa and Leicester. Again, always look at the expected standings stand as well. Um, where at the moment it's Everton, Everton, Nottingham and Bournemouth going down. But it is relatively, I mean, yeah, there, 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 so I guess... Uh, I really don't want to see Everton get relegated. This is not a team that should be down there. But I think the relegation fight, we, we at one point we will look at the teams in there and say, oh, there's so many big names in there. And one or two of them will have to go down. Uh, on top, Arsenal is now uh, scheduled to finish third. Chelsea and United in the Europa League. It's going to be interesting, I'm sure. Uh, upcoming games we have this weekend. We start with the Merseyside Derby. I think Everton could actually get something out of that. We have Chelsea against West Ham and we have United against Arsenal. This is from, for me the first test for Arsenal. Uh, that is one that I have marked, uh, earmarked, although at the same time Lask is playing, so I don't like that as well. I'm also looking forward to what a full full and will do against Spurs. And then uh, the week after, uh, Fulham against Chelsea, uh, Chelsea uh, neighbor duel, uh, City against Spurs and Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal Everton sounds good. It is not good, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, uh, interesting games coming up. In any case, please drop a line what you think uh, about what happened this week, transfers and on the field. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, 
Here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.